the components of time, the past, the present, and the future. They surround our lives every day, every hour, and every second. Out of the three, the only one which is possible to reconnect with is the past. The past, as we all know, is a time or period of time before the current moment. It simply means anything that's happened towards the left in the timeline of our lives. Diving a little deeper, the past can be broken down into two major components, the events and the people. Firstly, the events. This contains anything that's happened in the past. This means holidays, birthday parties, and much more. Next, there are the people of the past, the people that were at the events. Included in this group would be old friends, former teachers, the list goes on. The people of the past often interconnected with the events as they took part in these, similar to the pieces of a game. As people, we do things for a reason. You study for good grades. You socialize to build relationships. And the reason why we reconnect is because it strengthens and adds complexity to our own identity. Now that we've covered the basics, which actions can we take to reconnect with our past? As I mentioned, we can reconnect with the events the simplest way, and also most straightforward way to do this, is to review these events mentally. This is relatively self-explanatory. You think, you relive, you remember things that occurred. The vitality of these events is what makes them so incredibly important for the development of our own identity. Another way which we can reconnect is to visit the places where these events occurred. This may be a bit more problematic, as the memories can be different places, countries, and even continents. For example, you may have lived in a different place. This could be in another building down the street, or even halfway around the world. But when you revisit the place once again, you experience a portion of what you once felt. The places are a loophole. They allow us to experience the past while in the present. For example, for me to reconnect, it may require me to travel. I would visit places, maybe my old kindergarten, maybe the place my parents got married. And in the end, this helps me reconnect with my past, and it makes me feel more complete. But what about the people? They are the more important part of the past, the characters which gave our memories meaning. First. we need to rekindle the once-burning relationships. Although the specific steps may vary, one party needs to take initiative to start the repair. Ultimately, we would like to meet them, as this provides authentic conversation. Authentic conversation, which texting can't express. When we're typing with our fingers, we lose out on so many forms of communication. Body language, eye contact, tone, all are not able to be properly transmitted. The people of the past are the equivalent of the characters in a movie, which in this case is our own identity. If there were no characters the first time you watched the movie, there would be no enjoyment. Chances are you would turn off the TV. But when re-watching it, even just the theme song itself may bring back a certain amount of enjoyment. Now that we've reconnected, be it with the events or the people, we'll experience impacts, positive and possibly negative. And in the end, this is what we're seeking. I have a personal analogy I'd like to share. So I have a history of allergies, and the common way to combat this is to take an antihistamine. So one day, I was at the pharmacy, and out of curiosity, I looked at the possible side effects. Honestly, I was shocked. Here's that list. Yeah, taking this little pill could potentially kill me. Well, you may be asking, what's the connection between taking medication and reconnecting with your past? Well, the antihistamine is trying to minimize the symptoms of an allergic reaction. And the way that it does this can lead to these side effects. Like taking medication, when we strive for a goal, namely reconnection, we may encounter unintended side effects. Like I mentioned, 
reconnecting with our past may bring back negative emotions, but this only happens in a small, minute number of cases. This mostly happens when reconnecting with a sad event, such as the death of a loved one or a bad phase of your life. For example, if you were to visit the graveyard where your grandparents are buried, this would help you reconnect with them, but it may also reopen the healing wound and bring back more pain. However, we shouldn't let this pain discourage us from visiting them again because we want to reconnect with them. We want to relive the moments with them. Meanwhile, by doing these same steps, we can reap great benefits, the largest of which is the continued and further development of our own identity. Our identity is what makes us. It's what differentiates individuals from others. And in the end, this is our very core. From the moment you're born, all the way until your dying breath, you're shaping your own identity. So when we reconnect, we develop our identity in two ways. First, it allows us to come to terms with what has happened, bringing us closer to our past and to our human side. This is massively important for us as we get older and endure more painful moments. These moments can leave holes in our identity. And when we're offered or we develop closure, it works to mend these holes. Not fully, but it helps to ease this psychological pain. On the other hand, this also will develop our, will strengthen the bond to your culture. Your culture runs through everything you do and have done. Hence, it's also present in your memories. So when we reconnect, we strengthen and bond with our own culture. For example, I'm assuming most of us have celebrated Chinese New Year. So in 10 years' time, when we think back about the celebrations, when we look at the old group photos, we're reconnecting with our past and strengthening your culture. The emphasis is your culture, not the culture you identify with, your personal culture, a mixture of all the celebrations you have, the religion you believe in, the places you've lived. All that is strengthened and bonded with when you reconnect. Think of your culture as a slice of a circle. And our ultimate goal in life is to fill this circle for our culture to be complete. The way we do this is we reconnect. Every time you reconnect, you add a small little slice to the circle. And after countless times of reconnection, the little slices add up, ultimately filling the circle, fulfilling our lifelong quest. Through constant reconnection, our identity develops, becomes stronger, becomes more complex, and all that leads to the process of our lives, the evolution of our own identity. So later on, when you all go home, I encourage you to speak to family, to look through old photo albums, to contact old friends, and reconnect with your past. Thank you.